Hey guys, welcome to the Low Bar. My name is Levi Elizaga and this is Joel Negretti. And on today's show, we have the one and only Stephen P. Davis as our guest today. That is me. Hello. What's the P stand for? What did you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> and on today's show, we're also going to be doing our pop culture segment with Nassim Mirdamadi. Hello, hello. Today, we're going to be talking about movies, directing, and you know, films, and or at least the best of our abilities, because on this show, we do set the bar pretty low. Yeah. All right. What are you guys drinking today? Because I have a really freaking good beer here. It's called mm. Mango Cart by Golden Road. You've been bragging about that My, beer. Mine like is a Dragon Fandango by Toppling Goliath Brewing Co. Dragon Fandango. Yeah, it's a mouthful. It's a yeah, it is. Just like Stephen P. Davis. Sounds is. like a <laughs> yeah. porn movie. A porn movie. <laughs> right? Dragon Fandango. It's I a have, sour beer. <laughs> I have li- limited visibility, hazy India pale ale. That's a that's a mouthful. <laughs> Um, I think that's like probably their marketing strategy. It's like, hey, hey, just give these like things the weirdest freaking names ever. Hey, taller the like, can, longer the name. Right, right. <laughs> um, huge thanks to Mother Road Brewing. And what do you have over there? Yeah, it's uh, Golden Road Brewing. Golden Road Brewing. It's good. What do you have? I'll say it again. Topling Goliath oh. Brewing Co. Oh. Yeah. No, seem nothing. Uh, is an interesting name. Water. Water. <laughs> Sponsored by Sponsored Arrowhead. by Arizona. <laughs> Did you want a beer? No, thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for um, coming, man. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's fun. This is actually checking off uh, on my bucket list. I've always wanted to either do a podcast or be on one. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, directing, for the most part, film directing. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not the only thing that your that you ha- your your skill sets are. You're you're good with camera. Mm-hmm. You're good as an assistant director. You're also good as producer. Yeah, I like to do a lot of things, <clears throat> and that kind of goes into. My method of directing, uh, originally back when I was in film school, uh, you know, you're you're often in, you know, have to do other jobs on other people's projects. But I often would volunteer for things that weren't directing, um, just because I think a big part of my method was I want to understand what everybody around me has to go through. Yeah. Because you know, I viewed being a director as not like <clears throat> it's just your movie, but more so like you're the captain of a ship that we all share and if i don't know what like my acs go through our audio guy goes through our gaffer goes through etc then how can i properly you know or best communicate with them if i have no idea what Mm -hmm. they have to experience every day Mm -hmm. that makes sense i always notice you 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 have an expertise in every different field or a lot of different fields i try try. yeah and you're always wearing you know even if you don't, even if you're on one, you're wearing other part. blue hats. Other, <laughs> other, other blue shades hats. of blue, other shades of blue hat. Yeah, you wear multiple hats regardless of which role you're 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 wearing or yeah. you're doing that day. I, I kind of try to approach because, like, let's be honest, like, unless you're like you've made it, you know, being a director, um, until you get lucky enough to just be exclusively doing that and making a good living. You're probably going to be helping on other people. You're sets. wearing four. You're to gonna, yeah. yeah. So I'd rather do it with a smile on my face and be stoked to do it because I try to approach film sets, especially ones that aren't my own, as like being of service. Yeah. You know, because I would want anyone crewing on my projects to be thinking the same way. They want to like be of service and give everything they can to the project. So I try and do the same thing. And even if I'm just running audio or being the gaffer or mm. the AC, whatever, because each of those jobs is super difficult in and you know in and of themselves so would you say when you are focused on one particular position do you find it difficult to to work with a small crew because you have to wear those hats other hats uh it, it definitely can be more difficult yeah um obviously in an ideal world you're always gonna want more budget you're always gonna want more time you're always gonna like not have to have your mind in 10 places at once but you know that's just not realistic it doesn't always work that way so mm. It can be stressful, but the way I always view stresses in film as something I love doing is like it's good stress. I still go home, wake up the next day and go, all right, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. So it's stress, but it's stress that I gladly. Are there any ways to try to avoid that as much? I mean, what what is it? Maybe just pre-planning everything as much as you can? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Power and pre-production all the way. You know, if if you don't do proper pre-production, you're not you're setting yourself up for failure, first of all. Mm -hmm. Um, But second of all. 
it's you know budget. I think yeah I mean <laughs> a lot of a lot of times it has to do with budget you yeah. know and being in Arizona there's not as much budget out here so most sets people are doing more than one thing most of the time um so just do it with a smile on your face and do your best and just give 100 percent. you know at least on my sets yeah i don't expect like i'd much rather have someone who's just giving me their all than a know-it-all that's like has a bad attitude give us a quick teaser of a uh, upcoming project that you're working on your next project i basically wanted to write something that was mysterious had elements of like prisoners, Joker, uh, Nightcrawler, something Ooh, that was dark and mysterious, dark. and really let me try and explore that genre. Um, I'm in that phase in my directing journey where I'm trying to like dip my toes into several genres. And Are kinda... you doing the new Suicide Squad or something? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna play a game, and it's gonna be spin that pitch. Here we go. Welcome to Spin That Pitch. I am your host, Joel Negretti, and uh, Levi and Steven, we have a great game here for you guys. Uh, so essentially, we played this game before. Steven, I know you're new to this, so I'm just going to explain a little bit about the rules. Essentially, you're going to have two different spin wheels. One of them is going to include uh, movie genres, which is action, thriller, comedy, horror, adventure, romance, and documentary. Okay. The other spin wheel is going to include topics. That's going to include spoof. Demons, silent films, main character dies in the beginning, based on a book, black and white, remake, and aliens. So okay. essentially with the first right. movie genre, you're going to get one spin. And on that spin, that's the top, That's the uh, genre you're going to have for your film. And then on, you're going to get two spins for topics. Those two topics, you got to take those with the genre, and you got to pitch me an idea. Just any kind of abstract idea from my brain. It just has to be an original idea okay. that you have to that you have to pitch me. Now there is a little bit of a difference on here. Now we're adding to this. There are going to be timers set, so you're going to get a three minute timer to go ahead and pitch me the idea. And if you elapse over that three minute timer to pitch me the idea, you got to spin one more topic. And get and add that topic to your next and to your next uh, segment to give me your pit. Now, also, if you fail to give me that one, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to sing a song from our move from one of our lists here, and it's going to be an embarrassing <laughs> song. Uh, and it's only going to be two verses, but you're going to have to do oh, it. So, no. I would recommend not getting to the third penalty because that that wouldn't be good because uh, it'll be funny for all. <laughs> or do it because or just might do like it for it. content, right? <laughs> all right, we understand the rules. Kinda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and go this route. Levi, go ahead and spin that wheel, buddy. And there it goes. Let's see what our topic's going to be for your genre. And mm. it's documentary. So you got oh. a documentary. That's going to be your genre. Your genre has to be about a documentary. All right, Levi, so we have now your topic spin wheel. So why don't you go ahead and spin that wheel, please? Woo. All right. Please get character die in the beginning. Mm. <laughs> and spoof. Wait, how does that apply to documentary? Yeah, I know. It's going to be great. Here we go. Here we All go. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, oh! What is that? Aliens? aliens. You love fucking aliens, All right. dude. You got to mess right. your hair All up right. now when All you right. pitch like that one guy from the yeah. history show. <laughs> <laughs> aliens. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, Levi, that's your first topic. <laughs> so, <it's> aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking like that. All right, yeah. Levi, uh, so you got another spin. So let's go ahead and do it, buddy. Oh, we got two spins? You got two for topic. Oh, shoot. All right, what do we got? I was going to have fun with just one. And... Spoof. Sp <laughs> 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 All right, so he has spoof. So, Levi, oh, your docu man. you have a documentary that is based on aliens and is also a spoof. <laughs> And what uh, does just that for those mean? spoofs are kind of like parodies. I know what I would do. So, for instance, okay. um, not a, like scary movie is a spoof, right? Of Scream. I know exactly what right? I would do. So, just for an audience, so they understand what a spoof is. <laughs> and he has to make a documentary, which is supposed to be like documenting something, but it has to be a spoof documentary about alien. Okay, how about a spoof of Twister? A spoof of Twister. Bill Paxton? Yeah, well, Bill Paxton. Where's and Hale and Hunt. Where are the aliens? Yeah, and, yeah, they're, yeah, and, the they're, aliens? and, they're, and they're trying to catch this this tornado, and then they, they realize this tornado is being created by this e. alien, by, by E.T. <laughs> e. uh, e. E. And E.T. E.T. Well, well, where's, e. the, where's the documentary? The documentary. Because that's a movie. Right, but there, it's a documentary about filming Twisters. <laughs> 
about tornadoes. Okay, so it's a documentary about filming tornadoes. Yeah, and, right. and it's a spoof of Twister. Uh, and so they find this tornado that they're chasing. And uh, in the center of this Ten tornado seconds. is E.T. <laughs> he's like he's like whipping a fucking shirt. <laughs> Let me, you, let me you just reiterate. You interrupted me in my first pitch. Let, right? me, let me reiterate your <laughs> dumb idea. Okay. So you you had a documentary of of a twister of storm chasers, I'm assuming, that are looking into the phenomena of tornadoes. And they find out, because it's a spoof documentary, that it's E.T. doing a goddamn helicopter <laughs> in the fucking sky. Is yeah. that is that right? I'm going to lose this game regardless. Okay. All right. Of Listen, you finished. And, That's right. what's I'm important. Done. You I finished. finished it. All right. Now, Steven. Now it's your turn, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, but you see how it is. I he hope just, you have the hardest. Bad. You're going to be fine. I'll he's try. just not good at I'll this try. game. I'll try. All right, so let's go back to the topics. Those so, were st- those were tough, though. I, yeah. will, I must say, those, <laughs> those were tough. Those are tough topics, but that's what makes it fun. All, All right. right, so Steven, you got uh, you got the spin here for the, your yeah. topics, uh, for your movie genres. I'm sorry. Go ahead and spin it, please. And boom. Where are we looking at? What Something really getting? difficult. No. Another oh. fucking documentary. Oh. Okay. Comedy. comedy. All right. All right. All right. So I'll now go. we have a comedy for our genre. Levi, can we move on over to the topics, please? Oh, shoot. Okay. All right, here we go. So comedy, pretty easy, you know. Well, my comedy is so like um, dry and subjective. Right, well, it's see, gonna suck regardless. Again. Okay, Maybe you get it's a topic gonna suck. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. Well, okay. Of course, you went spoofs. That works. Spoofs. That works oh, okay. it's comedy. That shit, spoofs, because spoofs. that's obviously a comedy. All right. Didn't now, want it, but let's go work. ahead and try it again. Didn't want it, but that will work. I hope oh, you get something. God. Oh yes, based on a book. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> okay, good so luck. here you go. You gotta find. You just need a book that's funny that you can spoof. Or it doesn't actually. You don't even need a funny book. You just need a book like The Great Gatsby that you can spoof, and it's a comedy. So the idea is going to take place uh, during the era of Shakespeare, and the movie is actually going to be about Shakespeare bullshitting his way through all of his writing. And how he's getting all of his ideas from psychedelic mushrooms. I fucking hate you. Okay. So, <laughs> didn't it, they make? Isn't this so, Shakespeare in love? And that, that I movie? don't know. If that is. <laughs> Listen, but I think people would still the, want to watch. E. The <laughs> idea is going to be okay. I'm like Shakespeare, it. and he's going to be this person that's actually a nobody and mm-hmm. just happened to fall into success because yeah. he's actually been on psychedelics, just writing crazy ideas, and. Uh, Plot twist, he's been stealing all of his ideas from a homeless dude that has Ooh, no name. Okay. So he's like just this. BSing his way through all of his work and getting all of this fame. We Dude, have a Renaissance tornado. style movie. Renaissance, yep. Right? That's yep. starring William Shakespeare, where he's just kind of a mush. Yep. And, and it's gonna be played by Bill Hader. Bill, okay. Bill Hader. <laughs> he's gonna be hey, in the actually, in I'm the, liking this. He's now, gonna really. be okay. in the star. It's directed role. by Judd Apatow. <laughs> No, actually, I'd actually have it directed by McKay. McKay? Oh, oh fuck. Yep. This is gonna be okay. like an intellectual stupid movie. Mm. Yep. <laughs> yep. It'll be it'll be ridiculous and the spoofiness to it is just the absurdity of the story and uh-huh. it not being historically accurate okay. at all. Um but Ironically, the beginning will say based on a true story, based even though that's a lie. Like Fargo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and and not only do I think this will work, but yeah. I think people will love it because Adam McKay, he's hot right now. Yeah. Everything he makes is hilarious. See, he had time to get a fucking director. Yep. He had time to work this. Yep. He's working on he's working on the marketing yep. right now. Cinematography. Uh, <laughs> it'll be Roger what, Deacons. Can you give me a title? You it'll got be, a little bit of time. You got a minute. Be Roger Deacons is going to be the the DP. Yeah. <laughs> do you think you can give me a title? Oh man, uh, let's call it um, Renaissance Man. Uh, I like that actually. Renaissance, Renaissance Man fun. sounds kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, I like it's that. Not bad. We're gonna go with Renaissance Man. Uh, Levi can play the drunk guy, the homeless <laughs> that person. That steals all the ideas from. Well, because <laughs> yeah. we get no ideas from Levi this game. <laughs> not on this game. I, I think. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. So we got a movie titled The Renaissance Man mm-hmm. that involves William Shakespeare, played by Bill Hader, mm-hmm. who is stealing his ideas from a homeless man to write all these famous works. While he's on psychedelics. While on psychedelics, and I'm soon drinking that um that what's that shit called that uh, makes you hallucinate. Absinthe? Absinthe. Absinthe. That's pretty popular. <laughs> right All right. And uh, the spoof is going to be, it's just ridiculous because of uh, that yep. he's such a, like a, a jackass. Yep. Yep. Okay. And we'll have even modern technology in the movie to make it more ridiculous. Like cell phones. Like cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, 
Two uh, two very different films, obviously. Um, if I'm being completely honest, I think uh, I think I'm definitely going to go see me Steven's Levi film. Levi and Levi's movie e. is going to stay on the fucking e. cutting room floor. E. That's fine. Yeah, That's and I fine. hope Steven Spielberg. I'll be honest, though, Levi. I would still watch your movie. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, I would still. I would. I would. I'd be curious. What's inside that tornado? It's <laughs> yeah. what's inside. The, what's the eye almost, of the storm? It was almost worse than the ending of Nope. Oh, E.T. with his shirt off, just <laughs> yeah, doing the helicopter. Yeah. Listen, you could have mixed it with Magic Mike, where E.T. is a stripper. <laughs> yeah, that would have been funnier. I should have added that. Damn All it. All right. Well, that was fun. Well, hey, a pitch is multifaceted. It's not only the idea, but you gotta you gotta say why it's gonna work. Who's gonna, gonna put gonna, money into yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And Levi's just was terrible. So we're we're trying to say Levi's, you're terrible, and you need to leave. <laughs> I, I I will. I will. All right. So that was the end of our movie fights. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take it back to the low bar. All right. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, movie. F- Wait. <laughs> you enjoyed you in the <laughs> movie in embarrassing yourself. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Here, anyways. Steven, thank you for joining our show yes. today. Um, let's talk about you. What's going on? What are you working on? I'm a little hungry. You know, I'm just yeah, chilling. I know about yeah. that. I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, dude, lots of stuff. Uh, I think right now has been the busiest I've ever been in my life, film-wise. I'm flying out, filming like it feels like every other week. Nice. Yeah, I, every time I see your Instagram... <sighs> You're you're constantly traveling. Yep. Um, but you could just be making shit up. So I could be. <laughs> could be. So 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 next Friday I fly out to Tampa. Uh, then we're gonna drive over to St. Petersburg, and I'm filming with uh, Rob Gronkowski and his whole family. Nice. Wow. What yeah. are they? What, wow. are, what is it? So they're doing some sort of like barbecue contest, like sweepstakes thing where yeah. a fan gets to like come and hang out with their whole family and barbecue. Oh, so you guys are recording so I'm, we're mm-hmm. going to document cool. everything and then we're going to film. Is Tom Brady going to be there? Uh, I, I'm going to try and tell him like, hey, hit <laughs> dude, he needs a break. Yeah, he called Tom, dude. dude. Tell you Tom. know he's not hanging out with his wife. Tell Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Tom to come just take a break, man. Right? He's looking bad. But uh but yeah, he's not doing no, that we good. have a we have contract with uh like or there are contracted videos with Gr- uh, Gronk to like do like five more content videos. Mm-hmm. Nice. So like when I'm not doing my freelance stuff, uh I do all of the videos for Sprouts Marketplace. Oh nice. Oh, cool. So I like basically I just go see them like once a week and then uh we like kind of game plan and do like different videos and stuff, whether it's stuff with their CEO or stuff with like, we shot with Devin Booker recently. Mm. And then, um, next week is Gronk. A few weeks ago, I was in Kansas city filming for the big 12, um, basketball teams and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I was going to go film Mm. also at the PAC 12 championship in December, but, uh, that ended up getting nixed. So when I'm not doing that stuff, um, I'm doing a bunch of freelance stuff. Like I'm also going to go film on a cruise, in December as well. How long is it going to be? Nice. Uh, it's like a whole week. Yeah. Nice. So nice. it's it's going to be tight. Yeah. I've never uh, been coming with you, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to hide you. I'm going to hide you in a Pelican case. <laughs> if you need a PA on that set. You need a big Pelican case. <laughs> yeah. A big Pelican. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be your PA for that day. <laughs> We're yeah, going to cut week, out whatever of Levi's body. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to cut the foam. I'm just like this. <laughs> We're going to cut the foam. I'm going to be in this. We're going like to put Star your Wars. in the other one. I'm going to be that big block of just solid whatever. Han Solo. Han Solo in there. Um, directing. Tell us about directing. I know you're, mm-hmm. you love directing. That's probably your favorite position. Absolutely. In, you know, yeah. in film. Um, give us kind of what, wh- why do you love directing and what's, what's your favorite part of directing? So I grew up, um, not like, I feel like a lot of filmmakers go like, yeah, I grew up and like was filming with like my parents VHS and stuff. So I grew up <laughs> filming skateboarding because mm-hmm. I was a skateboarder growing up. So that was my introduction to like filming things and doing stuff of that nature. Um, but I was never like, like I grew up wanting to be a pro skateboarder and stuff. And then mm-hmm. I got into high school and then kind of like didn't have a clear direction on what I wanted to do or be. And it wasn't until like I was working in a finance job in my early 20s, for five years where I decided, um, you know, I just, I just, I very much want to live a life worth living and like a fun life and enjoy what I do and not just be not make good money but be sad you know I I hit a point where I was thinking about what makes me happy and I remember growing up and watching movies with my family and uh one thing that stuck out to me and why this is also one of my favorite movies of all time is watching back to the future with my whole family part one two or three 
Uh, well, the first one is the one I'm referring to, but sure. all of it is great. Okay. Um, so, like, I, I have fond memories of being a kid watching Back to the Future and just that being such a core memory for me and, like, a very happy point in my life. And I was like, you know what? I, If I could do that one day for somebody, make something that someone watches and they get something from, like, that would be so impactful. Because to me, mm-hmm. impacting others is super, like, I, it's just the best feeling in the world. Yeah. So doing that through a medium like art and film, which I've always been more of a like artsy person, um, was just it just seemed like a, a good fit. So <clears throat> not everyone has to do this or should do this, but I went the route of film school because I had no idea where to begin. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had no experience aside from just this filming with skateboarding videos. Mm. So I went to school um, and I just kind of took off running from there and I found myself drawn to directing because, you know, I've always, I've always felt like I'm a confident person and like someone who doesn't mind talking to people or I don't want to say telling people what to do, but just kind of like delegating and, you know, leading when I need to. And being that I'm a social person and like talking to people, directing just kind of fit. Like I have no problem talking with actors, talking with crew and trying to like be, you know, um, talk to people on a personal level or just like achieve a vision together. That's really cool. You know, there's different aspects of directing and I, I agree with you. You know, there's, it's, it's from beginning to end is watching that, that progress, that, that process. It's just so cool, it's man. Really it starts cool. as an idea and becomes something. Do you right? like, um, like, per, like when you're on set, do you prefer speaking more with like the crew or do you like talking with talent and doing that kind of thing? Oh, both. Crew crew deserve the same amount of respect that as actors do. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's doing, But as a director. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone's doing everyone's you need to talk to everybody. Like I said, yeah. you're the captain of the ship. Yeah. If you've ever been a PA, you know you understand how difficult it is to be a PA. You are literally at the bottom of the pile. I found it very easy when I was a PA. They only gave me one thing to do. It was literally like, stand by this door. Don't let anyone in here. They're like, don't let no one here. And guard Yeah, yeah, and answer us when we call you on the walkie. See, that was probably the easiest PA job. I think they saw me and they're like, hey, stick that asshole. And that's another thing thing with directing I wanted to say, too, is like... um, you know, you're not always going to get like to direct every single film job you have. Yeah. So be willing to like work any job, even if it's just being a PA and yeah. do it with. Are you um, still willing to do that now? 100 percent. Really? 100 okay. percent. Yeah. It, like, spe- like, I just love film. I love being that's, a part of film. Levi's so See, that's, bougie. That's, I think he would. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm arrogant about it. It's just I've, you know, I've done the PA gigs. And you just yeah, don't want to be I, told probably. You, you probably figure, well, I should be telling you. There's a caveat to, to it. So, so. You want people to know what you do. You want people to know, like, if I'm a director, I want you to know I'm a director. Like, that's what I do. Yeah. The only reason that I would be like, yeah, I would 100% PA is because, mm-hmm. like, like for example, if Spielberg came to me and was like, oh, hey, shit. I need a PA, yeah, yeah, I'd be like, oh, yes, yeah. yes, please. So, like, always be willing to work <laughs> any job, but do it to the best of your ability. Mm-hmm. And people will notice that and people will want you around more. Sure. Oh, just for our audience, PA is a production assistant, usually like the yes. bottom of the... They're the order. ones that do everything, everything that's asked that's, of them. Yeah. yeah, they're amazing and we love them. Yes, absolutely. But I was a PA for... I did, that was my job is doing that. And then I was like... He's usually a PA at all of our sets. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and Even when I'm a producer on it, Even when I'm he's the a fucking producer. PA. Because nobody producers, else, they can't afford to li- have anybody else leave other than me. producers <laughs> always show up to set and end up, especially in lower budget things, end up yeah. having to like take on all these other little yep. jobs because yeah. that's me. Because <laughs> otherwise they're just standing around. Just yeah, like, exactly. I just saw them, and then they're like, "Hey, um, can we need to send such and such?" But they're also doing this. I'm like, "I'll fucking go," you know. Yeah, and yeah. that, and that's yeah. that was it. And it's like, okay, whatever. So, I, I mean, do it. I mean, <laughs> the end of the day, you got to be open minded when you come on set. Mm-hmm. So be if, firm, be, be firm, firm in what you know right. you want to be. But you don't want to be arrogant. Yeah, exactly. Um, before we go into our tips from Steven on how to be a successful director. Yeah, we're going to do we, we just got some new beers. So we just want to go over some of the beers that we got here. Right. What do we got? I got the Mind Haze um, from First Stone uh, Mind Haze. It says a California beer company. So thank you. Hey, Cal. Thank you, Cali. Yeah. Look at his hat. It says Cali. 
This is Golden Road. It's fucking delicious. From man- uh, Mango Cart. This is this is delicious. Yeah. Golden Road, please sponsor them. They really love Seriously, it. Seriously, this <laughs> is if really good. If you can send me beer. all of this, I would be fucking Speaking out. of Golden Road, there's also this. Oh, yeah. I had that one just last. <laughs> um, That's good You because you brought those. Prairie, Prairie Artisan Ales, Rainbow Sherbert. Um, it's a sour ale. Rainbow Sherbert. Ooh, it is delicious. Sour ale. All right, so let's get some, some tips. Give us, uh, give our audience some tips so on how to be a give successful me some director. Tips. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just say you this. You fuck the lot. audience. <laughs> I'll just say this first and foremost. Success first and foremost is just how you define it, really. There's like obviously the you if you made it thing, but <clears throat> I'll say aside from things I've said already, uh, one thing is. Is this tip if, number one? Yes, tip number one. <laughs> if you want to direct, just direct, dude. Like just go make stuff. Find people to make stuff with. Start perfecting your craft because it's a craft. It's a it's an art form. Um, there's a lot of people that will start being filmmakers and expect everything to be given to them right away. Mm-hmm. Um, like, oh, I'm good. I know I'm good. Why am I not getting these gigs? Well, dude, you just got to work. You just got to put in the hours. Another thing about that is not only work on your craft, but let people know you are. Like, you have to be visible in the community. You have to let people know that you're doing stuff, whether that's through social media or you sharing the stuff you're making. Um, it's the name of the game is networking. Mm -hmm. So you could be the best director in the world, but if nobody knows who you are, then it'll just stay that way. I totally agree on that because that's the biggest thing is as an artist, you have to be able to show your work. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to tell people what you can do as an artist. Otherwise, you're just some some dude that's just doing art inside yeah. their own home. And like I said, knows. you could be the best in the world, but if you don't show anybody, then it nobody knows well that not you're be. the best in the world. Yeah, you don't find success through um, success. You only find success through failures. Oh. You only you only get better by doing bad. Another thing I wanted to mention um, was like we need to be realistic. To make it, you need to have luck. You need to get lucky. I hate but, I hate that word luck. Yeah, but but here's the but thing. But it's true. Here's the here's the extension of that. Um hard work is what puts you in more lucky scenarios and situations. Hard work and dedication to your craft is what's going to put you in more opportunities to get lucky. Be okay with failure. Um don't be afraid to network and connect with people and get your stuff out there and just keep trying things and hard work and dedication. Be, be accept the fact that luck has something to do with it, but your hard work and dedication will get you more opportunities to get lucky. There's no road to success. It's Mm-mm. whatever road that you take on, whatever, however you see success, that's the road you're going to be on. So it Absolutely. doesn't matter what the what it is. But one thing I often said too when I first started and why I was willing to just jump into this field that's so uncertain is, I kept telling myself I think that the only I think that the people that didn't succeed were just because they gave up Mm -hmm. because it's scary, you know, it's scary and it's really hard. I mean, I went to film school and, and, and people that I've, I've, I've met through film school have given up, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's terrible because some of the people that have given up are really talented artists or some of them were. Yeah. (laughs) The thing is, yeah, the thing is it's, it's when you go to like, in particular, (laughs) when you go to the art school, you, you feel like, you know, uh, you're going to be successful if you do this and this and that, but it what they don't train you for is the the amount of work that gets you to that success. And, and so if you're not prepared for that, you're going to quit, unfortunately. Well, that's but, a good point because I think anybody who goes to film school, like we went to film school too, anybody who goes to film school wants to automatically be the director coming yeah. off of it. But it's like when you go to, the, especially in Arizona, when you go to film school, they're not making you to be a great writer or a great director Mm-mm. or great. They're making you to be more like your players in the industry. Like you can exactly. be an editor, you can be a camera op, even you lower can be than a PA, that. Sometimes, you can be a gaff. yeah, you. That's what they're kind of pumping out. They're not pumping out awesome. Fuck, you don't go to film school in Arizona to be a writer. You don't do no. that kind of or to be a director here. You do that. You you need to go to California. Probably. I mean, you could probably find that stuff. But you, they don't pump that out here. Well, yeah, and, and and again, it's like even the people again that do find success through those different routes is like stop comparing yourself. It's, yeah, it's no. it's you mm-hmm. you are setting yourself up for failure because again, th- there's no one way to succeed in this business. Just just do it the way you are 
finding what works for you and keep at it and mm. have faith in the process. Stop looking at it as a competition. Yes. And start looking at it as teamwork. You do not need film school. Go on YouTube, dude. Um, not only do you not need <laughs> film school. Um, no, you don't. It, again, like you can not go to film school and do better than someone that did or vice versa. Yeah. Going to film school isn't a bad thing either. Whatever yeah. works for you. That's yeah. it. But I will say this, despite whether you go or not, get on sets. Get on more exactly. sets. Be willing, That's... be willing to be afraid and get on sets with people you don't know and just get out there and work. I learned like way more actually, like while I was in film school, I learned way more getting on sets yeah. than I ever did in cla the classroom. Totally. The classroom helped me learn my foundation. Yeah. But me being willing to put myself in uncomfortable situations and get on sets with people I have never met before, mm -hmm. million dollar indie sets where I felt like I was like a, a small minnow. Um, mm -hmm. Like I just was like, you know what? It, it, just be willing to be uncomfortable. Be willing to put yourself in scary situations and, and you'll probably surprise yourself. All right, so we're gonna start into our pop culture segment. Here we go. <laughs> I know we wanted to do an October recap, and we will, but I don't want to start this segment without talking about Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter passed away uh, beginning of this month, and I don't want to get into the details of the drug addiction. We all know about it. I don't want to get into the details of mental health and stuff like that. I just want to say rest in peace, Aaron Carter. I think we can all speak on how our generation, uh, he was a big part of it. So I yeah. want to jump right into it. We all heard about it. I'm not happy about it. Elon Musk purchased Twitter. Why aren't you happy about it? Have you been I don't watching like Elon Musk. No, I really don't know. I, I really can don't I say know. That I'm it, not even on Twitter. Can I just say that it's hilarious? It is. It's very hilarious. entertaining. Have you seen this? Like, just his, like... He just fucking suspended Kathy Griffith. He... It, I, dude... Because he, she he impersonated him. He took Trump off too, right? Didn't he? No, no I think he's back. Was, no, no, he... Because no, he, he was permanently banned from Twitter... And I think he's he back reinstated now. Yeah, he's back he now, reinstated I Trump. But, but it, he said he's not going to reinstate him for the, I could be wrong, the 2024 Oh, election. I have no idea. I don't know. But I would say, I just got on Twitter way before, not well, a few weeks before Elon Musk. It's <laughs> like the day before. The day, the day before. before. I got lucky. But um, you get very much updated news faster on Twitter than you do on Instagram. You do. That's Twitter. why I'm on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you if do. you want I don't understand fast Twitter, news, though. Yeah, it's I don't quick. get it. I will say this. I have a Twitter, but I don't use it. It's yeah, literally just for that reason. Like I said, I have get, Twitter, but I don't updates. use it. But I, I, have... I couldn't even tell you what my Twitter handle is. <laughs> Same. I, I don't know. Same. It. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is my all-time girl crush, Rihanna. Is it Rihanna or Rihanna? Oh, what, what happened? Yeah, Rihanna. What happened? Well, she, she drops new Bowl. music for oh, a while. Oh, okay. I thought this was going to be bad news. I thought something like, was bad. What? Like, what happened? No, she's doing the Super Bowl. No, she's doing the Super Bowl. Oh, cool. So I want to bring this up because I want to ask you guys. Who would you want to see as her guest? Because there's going to be guests. Yeah. Well, oh. mm. well, hold on a second. I don't know. Does anybody know here what label she signed to? Is she like is on her own? Oh, program? here we go. I know. I have an answer. Uh huh. Um, I'm I'm gonna butcher his last name because it's African. And I'm so sorry. But uh -huh. it, Toby Nugwe Nugwe. That doesn't narrow it down for me. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know who, who that, that is. is. He's a rapper. He's amazing. Oh, okay. Where is he from? Um, Africa, I, no, no, African he's from here. Asia. He's from here. It's oh. just his his roots are in Africa. Okay. I think it's well. She's Uruguay. had collaborated with a lot of people. You know, we've well, seen. The, and the please Super don't Bowl's attack be, me if I mispronounce that no, name. We're gonna attack you. The Super Bowl <laughs> is in don't. Arizona this year too, right? It's in Arizona. Rihanna, get futuristic. He's dope. Arizona artist. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I you guys think she, need to tag her because I know you're lo watching Rihanna. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't you think know she, she is. I don't think she's gonna have like another hot chick up there to like kind of overshadow. Oh, uh, and Rihanna, Rihanna's all about girl power. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'm I'm judging her or something. You are. No, I'm projecting. <laughs> all right, what's what's the what's the next hot button subject? I need to add <laughs> something <laughs> controversial, and yeah. I'll end this. Okay. okay. Yeah. What's In up? my opinion, what's controversial? So far, this Guardians is of the Galaxy oh. One and Two. Oh. Oh. Are the best Marvel movies ever made? How's that controversial? Oh, Those controversial. are good. They're good. I didn't like the second one. I love the I second love one. The okay, first one. here we go. I like the second one. My my favorite Marvel movie is actually uh, Winter Soldier. Winter That's Soldier's a good one, good. though. But Winter that Soldier is a really good, pretty good one because I, I it transcends the superhero genre. It's also a spy movie. It's okay. also just like an action movie. So before we go into the next segment, what is your worst? What is the worst Marvel movie in your opinion? Oh God! Oh, I, I could do it. Thor: The Dark World. <laughs> that is pretty That's bad. Iron one. Man 3. Oh, Iron Man 3 okay. was bad, yeah. Honestly, I did not like Captain Marvel. 
Captain what? Marvel. What? I, I, I didn't love that. Love I didn't, I didn't like the writing, man. Really? It seemed, it seemed very cheap shoddy. Like, a mm. lot of the writing scene, Like, one scene I thought that was so such an eye roll to me was the the stereotypical dude in a leather vest on a bike outside the gas station okay. Yeah, okay. like cat but, calling but her. it was it was set back in the what 90s it was supposed right to be the 90s. sure mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. but it's one of those things where i was just like oh come on yeah. <laughs> all right so yeah i i do i will agree iron man 3 was terrible yeah, it was the awful. worst movie I've ever seen. I won't say seen Captain Marvel's the worst, but that's the one in recent memory that, that I this walked one that out you of. don't like. So it's just when I enough. walked out of the theater and I was like, I was kind of like, yeah. um, and yeah. and Thor: The Dark World. Thor: The Dark do, World was I really bad. That's that's a, I think that's consensus terrible. as the worst. I will say this: two though, of those I, movies. I liked are Iron Man three more than other people did, just because I, um, I don't know. I I I liked the I villain, know. but I hated the villain. At the, at the the twist at the end was just terrible. Wait, what movie? Absolutely, the terrible. twist was bad. Iron, yeah. Man, 3. Iron Man three. The twist. Oh yeah, was it was bad. awful. But it was anyways, awful. let's go back to the low bar real quick. I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast with. Stephen P. Davis in the pop culture segment, as well as the game that we played today, which, by the Erect. way, by the way, my, my idea is still better. Anyways, <laughs> uh, before we sign off here, um, I want to make sure you guys reach or uh, at least get out there and talk to Stephen because he's just a, a, a wealth of, of, of knowledge. Honestly, he is. So uh, if you have questions, concerns, or anything that uh, or you want to ask him, you want to yell at him. Steven, go ahead. Give us a uh, well, give us a run. I appreciate the hype. It's not deserved. I'm just a normal dude. But um, yeah, you can reach me on Instagram. It's Stephen P. Davis Film, and that is S T E P H E N uh, P. Davis Film. Um, my website is stephenpdavis.net. Um, but yeah, just reach out on Instagram. Let's make stuff. I'm like all about connecting with people and doing fun stuff and collaborating so i'm a little confused why did you give me your only fans <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. that was that, that's <laughs> supposed to be low bar after dark <laughs> yeah. low bar after dark Love yeah that. steven i think you that's had a lot one. of good a lot of good things to uh talk about and definitely was fun playing the movie fight with you man or excuse me the uh spin wheel game with you uh, i'd love to have you back to some time yeah i would mm-hmm. love to this is i love doing this kind of thing i love talking to people drinking probably too much sometimes and drinking <laughs> Yeah, but I can only say this, that anything I said during this, I can only credit the people that taught me that and and (laughs) helped me along the way as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining our show. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Uh, If you haven't yet, please make sure to go to our Instagram at they underscore low bar and also visit our website, lowbarpodcast.com and check us out. Check us all. Our, our, Our episodes are on there. And if you can, and if you w- want to see more episodes, please make sure to donate. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for coming out here. Thank you. Steven, uh, I know you have a lot of projects going on, so I'd love to hear more. But next time when we have you on the show, we'd love to see and hear what, do what you got going on. How come you never thank me? Because <laughs> you're always on the show and you have nothing to be thankful of. So <laughs> thank you both for having thank me. Yeah, I appreciate you. you guys. Yeah, you guys were awesome. All right, guys. Thank you for watching The Low Bar. Have a great day.